basic employability skills, and we'll be looking at relationships and social skills. And many times they call this um, soft skills, learning how to work with people, um, learning the things to deal with either customers or your uh, employees or your co-workers and things. <clears throat> so in this section, we're going to explain the importance of social skills and identify the ways of good social skills <clears throat> are applied to uh, the construction trade. So we're going to explain how the to resolve conflicts and with co-workers and supervisors, explain how to give and receive constructive criticism, identify the uh, and describe various social issues that concerns in the workplace and describe how to work in a team environment and how to be a effective leader. Self-presentation is the way a person dresses, speak, act, and reacts with others. Work ethic is work habits that are the foundation of a person's ability to do his or her job. Professionalism is integrity and work appropriate manners. Um, confidentiality is the private or the, well, really is the privacy of, of information of a person. In other words, keeping things confident um, in other words, you're not spreading people information around or your company's not doing the same thing. Um, initiative is the ability to work without constant supervision and solve problems independently. And initiative and uh, or having initiative is certainly something that most companies look for because uh, if they have to tell somebody everything to do, um, meaning that they have to be there. If they're not there, that is probably not going to get done. But somebody that can work independent is certainly a, a, a trait that is really looked for. Uh, tactful is being aware of the effects of your statements and actions on others. In other words, you, when you communicate, you, when you say being tactful, meaning that you are thinking before you open your mouth up to say the right thing so you're not hurting somebody or causing them to um, be disturbed based on what you said. Compromise, when people involved in a disagreement make concessions to reach a solution that everyone agrees on. Constructive criticism, a positive offer of advice intended to help someone correct mistakes or improve actions. Harassment, a type of discrimination that can be based on race, age, disability, sex, religion, culture issues, health or language barriers, bullying, unwanted, aggressive behavior that involves a real or perceived power of imbalance. Uh, this form of harassment may include offensive, uh, persistent, um, intentional, physical, threatening uh, behaviors directed toward a person. Sexual harassment is a typical in uh, a way that, um, or a type of discrimination that uh, results from unwelcome sexual advances, uh, requests for sexual favors, or other verbal or physical behaviors with sexual overtones. Uh, zero tolerance, the, uh, the policy of applying laws or penalties to uh, even minor uh, infractions uh, in codes and orders to uh, to reinforce its overall importance, uh, typically related to drug or alcohol abuse uh, when applied to the workplace.
Ephenamines, it's a class of drugs that causes mental stimulations and feelings of euphoria. Methamphetamines is highly addictive, crystalline type of uh, derived from um, amphetamines and, uh, and effects on the, um, the central nervous system. Barbiturates, a class of drugs that induce relaxations, slowing the body ability to react. Hallucinogens, a class of drugs that distorts the perceptions of reality and causes hallucinations. Opiates is narcotic painkiller uh, derived from the opiates, poppy plants, or synthetically manufactured. Heroin is the most common use of opiates. Synthetic drugs. Basically, these are drugs that have been made in a laboratory that is used to uh, simulate other types of drugs. And of course, uh, cannabis is uh, one of the most popular ones these days. However, it still can be an issue on the job. So cannabis and, uh, is something that um, most employers are trying to get their um, people not to use on a job because it can alter their work. Leadership, the ability to set an example for others to follow by exercising authority and responsibility. So looking at personal and social skills, self-presentation, that is how you, uh, other people perceive you. In other words, is that how people see you as a person, as a worker, as a tradesman. Um, in other words, you set that pace, you set that presentation for ones to see. In other words, is that you want people to respect you, you dress in a certain way, you carry yourself in a certain way. It's something as simple as a handshake, that looking at a person in the eye, um, wearing the company uh, clothes uh, properly, it just not uh, tore up or, or you clean it, you wash it, making sure it's, you're presentable. So admirable um, personal qualities of people or workers is that they're dependable. Um, they have organizational skills. And they um, set up things correctly. Um, they're competent at the, their skill level. They're honest. Uh, they're, they show professionalism. And of course, they have good grooming habits. So again, how you work with other people and how other people see you is how they will respect you. You want someone to respect you. Um, their perception of you has to uh, of have to be in a way that they see you in the way they understand. So in other words, sometimes we have to do things that we may not want to do, but we learn how to fit in to be able to get things done. So an employee with a strong work ethic will put forth their best effort. They would take the initiative to help and to re and to solve uh, problems, and so um, they don't show up late. In other words, the perception people have: you show up late all the time, they figure that you don't care, and you absent a lot, they think that you have some other issues going on. But again, we need to uh, have your employer and your other coworkers to respect you, um, that you stand for certain things. In other words, they look at you as a leader. So resolving uh, conflicts with uh, coworkers, how did the problem start? Why is there uh, there's a problem? Why is it continuing? Um, I would say most people that's in leadership or want to be in leadership or they would take the high road. In other words, they uh, get the job done and not worrying about the personal things. They don't make nothing personal. And, and so in other words, personal meaning that you, um, it's about that person you, or are you working for the company to get the job done because the company expect us to get certain, um, use our skills to accomplish the, the task that at, uh, at hand. Has it been building or did it just suddenly happen? And I can say things will happen on the job. I just, but how do you resolve that problem? How do you go around it? Again, 
I be honest with you, you don't have to go home with that person. You don't have to live with that person. But you can certainly spend eight hours or whatever time on the job with that person. And you don't have to make it personal and just, hey, hey, let's get this job done and all these other things we don't have to worry about. Um, <clears throat> do both sides see it the same way? So these are questions that you can be asking yourself when there's a conflict and how do you resolve it? Usually when there's a uh, issue and a conflict, the best thing to do is, hey, um, uh, we don't have to uh, deal with this, but we do have to get the job done. So organize your thoughts when you're dealing with the supervisor. When there's a conflict, be precise because they don't have time to be personal. And if a supervisor getting personal, that they have a problem. They certainly have a problem. They should be in supervision, number one. But organize your thoughts and look at the situation objectively. Objectively is not your personal feelings. You're taking that out, your feelings, what you've been exposed, your culture. Take that out and just deal with the facts. That is looking at something objective. Are you being reasonable? Can you um, find a compromise? Approach the supervisor with respect. And certainly don't try to um, uh, have any uh, type of animosity uh, toward you. Just be straight because like I say, they are paying your, your salary. Um, you certainly don't have to live with that person, but be respectful and typically they will respect you back. If you come to them, like I say, um, in, in a um, unrespectful way, they certainly they can come back in a way that they say, well, I can certainly use somebody else. I don't need to take this. They're looking for somebody that is a team player working together. So accept and respect the decision. Be open-minded about the decisions your supervisor make. Again, it's something that you know that wasn't right, and certainly you can find another job. But as you're there, here's the thing, don't burn bridges. The reason why is that you may have to use them as a reference one day. You may, uh, be honest with you, you may actually, they may change management, and you may be coming back to that company when things change. So you never know in the future what will exp what will come about the different things that you would end up going through. Talking about um, giving and receiving criticism, it should always be constructive. And constructive criticism meaning that you thought through it. You're not being personal again. In other words, you thought through it. You've been methodical. In other words, you thought through it step by step to how you're going to uh, give criticism. In other words, criticism is not talking about somebody, but correcting someone. So constructive criticism is one of the many ways that anyone and everyone learns on the job. In other words, just explaining, hey, this is a better way to do it, This or this is the proper way to do this. You don't go through and just... Uh, um, tearing somebody down. You're the uh, most stupidest person I ever saw. And you just, you don't know how to do that. Instead of, oh, let me show you how to do this right. I see what you did, uh, but there's a better way that you can be more productive to get your job done faster and easier for you. Be thankful for it. In other words, um, especially when it is uh, delivered in a thoughtful and helpful way, okay? So when you're giving criticism, that's a, certainly a way to do it. And um, usually they call it the sandwich type of uh, way to give criticism. In other words, give something positive, then tell them what need to be changed. Uh, give them that information they require, and then bring back some other information and say, uh, uh, how uh, that, um, why they're needed and why uh, um, that they know that you can get it done. So use positive support words uh, based on facts. So do not overdo it. 
pick your moments carefully. Criticize in private in most cases. In other words, you tell somebody that they, uh, that they need help or, or more direction or do it by yourself with that person, not in a group, not with other supervisors, not with other things. Give that person respect if you are a supervisor. Offer alternatives. Remove the personal nature. That's why I say never be personal. So remove the personal nature of the, the, the comments so it doesn't feel like you're attacking that person. You're not attacking their abilities. You're not attacking who they are. Offer compliments as well as criticism. Open with a compliment if possible. So you open with a compliment. You tell them what the criticism is, then close um, with some type of compliment. That is the best way to sandwich the bad news that they will understand that there's a problem, but they still are needed. So receiving criticism, think about, just think of it as a chance to learn something. Don't be so thin skinned that someone tell you something that you feel like there's something wrong because maybe it is something wrong. If not with you, just you haven't learned maybe how to do something in the way that need to be done. So try not to take it personally. Um, being defensive or uh, disputing advice aggressively is a waste of everybody's time. Because if you do that, you are not learning the right way to do something or a better way. If a supervisor who's been doing this for many years that know how it's supposed to be done, it gives you some advice, Take it and work on it, because one day you may be doing the same thing to somebody else. This is a, a good opportunity to do display to, to display your work ethics. Ask for details if the vice is vague. If you disagree, state your case clearly and be respectful. Always be respectful. Alrighty, um, the construction workplace represents a cross sections of society. You're going to have all different cultures, races, people, male, female. Um, as a true um, thorough um, of this world, hopefully it will be diverse. So you're going to deal with all different types of personalities and things. And But the best thing to do, you can learn from each other. You can learn how to deal with each other. You can learn uh, from each other. Harassment, major stress and, and uh, drugs and alcohol abuse and, and are problems that must be acknowledged and addressed when we all together. Because safely, we don't want to be uh, hiding things from supervisors when there's a problem. That's the only way we'd be able to um, uh, somebody get hurt on the job, then we held back and then something occurs like that, then of course now there's a major problem going on. So again, make sure that when the social place that we're working together, there's always gonna be some things that are gonna be happening, uh, negative and positive. Harassment is something that should never happen, uh, no matter what type of harassment it is. Uh, defined as negative behavior that may be based on race, age, disabilities, gender, religion, etc. Um, it creates a negative working environment. Nobody wants to work in a place where they've been harassed. Matter of fact, it's, your supervisor don't want it. Here's the reason why. Usually productivity goes down when people are being harassed. Things are not getting done the way it's supposed to get done. Sexual harassment is illegal. A person can go to jail because of it. It is typically repeated if it's not addressed. It's going to continue to happen. Bullying is more common, but um, it's reported a lot less. Yes, even grown folks can be bullied. There's people who haven't grown up yet in life. <laughs> Adult bullying is difficult to handle throughout uh, the simple positive, uh, positive uh, interactions, but um, careful and consistent documentations of social problems is critical to success of any type of uh, organization. In other words, uh, there's a problem, uh, just bring it forward to a supervisor. Okay. 
drugs and alcohol certainly on the job is not tolerated at all. It's not tolerated. If you have a problem, usually most companies, especially large companies, they will work with you, try to get you help. And most of the time there's help out there for it. But if somebody's drinking on a job or taking drugs on a job, it should be aware to the supervisor. These are all different types of drugs. We kind of covered that in the in the, um, uh, the terms. And just go through this. And you can see some of these are, um, well, you can tell when somebody usually, um, hopefully you can tell if somebody on drugs. So what a good leader is. A good leader listen. A good leader leads by example. A good leader communicates well. A good leader motivates people. A good leader looks for the best or helps the person to work at their best level. And they want to come to work because it's a good place. In other words, uh, most good leaders have um, high self-confidence in themselves and they'd like to pass it on to other people. So again, uh, Leadership, some people are born with good leadership skills, but leadership skills can be taught to almost anyone to be more effective in leading on a job. So again, leaders can motivate by recognizing and praising good work and, and effects that, and efforts that have been put in. Uh, matter of fact, it doesn't take a lot. Sometimes just little small things can really uh, motivate somebody to do more. Uh, creating and supporting opportunities for people to feel successful, providing opportunities for advancement, encouraging workers to feel uh, their job is important and is needed, uh, providing a chance and uh, challenging a, an environment uh, that they know that, um, that they, their mind's been used in um, not just doing dead end jobs all the time, but doing things that is challenging that to get them excited that there is something new every day. Rewarding significance, uh, the, the things, the efforts that um, that someone is actually uh, achieving on a job. All right, let's go through a few of these um, questions. Approaching your work with integrity in a professional manner is called blank. And that is no more than professionalism. Professionalism. The approaches to resolve conflict with co-workers and with supervisors are very similar. Is that true or false? Um, that's actually false. The way you deal with your supervisor is certainly different than your co-workers. You can talk to your co-workers any type of way, but still being respectful. But when you're dealing with a supervisor, they're controlling your livelihood. They control your livelihood. And so, um, and plus they have more experience than your co-workers do. Your supervisor should be the ones that can actually help you on the job compared to your co-worker. So yes, it would be different. All these are ways in which constructive criticism should be given, except which one of these? When it comes to constructive criticism, you should be able to suggest alternatives. You should offer facts. You should use positive, supportive words, but offering your opinions, your opinion is your opinion. It's not a fact. And so in other words, constructive criticism should be always based in facts, not opinions. Now, what do you think? Well, I think this, um, again, what we think could be right or may not be right. It may be partially right. Which type of uh, drug is addictive stimulant that affects central nervous systems? Amphetamines. All of these are examples of characteristics of demonstrating by leaders except which one of these? <laughs>
Leading by example certainly is a trait that leaders should have. Being effective communicators, that is a very good trait of leaders. Having self-confidence is a very good trait of being a leader. Being a perfectionist, that is certainly not. Yes, a person that nitpick everything is a person that would drive their employees crazy. So uh, again, bagging down, leaders bagging down, bagging down from being a perfectionist because not everybody can work at the same level as the leader. Maybe the leaders happen to be the best in this area and it, it comes easy to them, not everybody. Uh, so I have learned over the years that you cannot expect everybody to work at your level. So being a perfectionist, it's not one of those characteristics that should be demonstrated by uh, leaders. In other words, looking for the best from people, yes. But being a perfectionist and nitpicking, when it's not done just perfectly, um, should we work to a level, to a perfection that we're looking for perfectionists? Yeah, yeah, we should. But we are human. We do make mistakes.